Juvenile disease is a blood disorder that affects over 100,000 people in the U.S. alone. So what is the disease? Who does it affect? And how is it passed on? It's time to dive right in. This is What's Up, Doc? Sickle Cell Edition. <laughs> Joining us is Pfizer's Chief Patient Officer, Dr. Frida Lewis Hall. Woo! Thank you for hey, joining hey, us. So we love it when Always you come and teach us. Okay, can you start off by explaining to us what is sickle cell disease? Yes. Sickle cell disease is an inherited disorder that affects red blood cells. Oh, okay. Okay, so usually our red blood cells are uh, round and they're flexible and they flow smoothly through our blood vessels carrying oxygen throughout our body. In someone who has sickle cell disease, though, their red blood cells are shaped like sickles or crescent moons. Okay. Okay, and then they can also become rigid and sticky. Oh. So as they travel through blood vessels, they can get stuck, and that slows blood flow or stops it and oxygen flow to parts of the body. Okay. That's not good. Now, this can cause this not, and it, it causes a whole host of problems. One of them is um, sudden intense, and I'm talking about intense, pain. Uh -oh. These are called vaso-occlusive crises or pain crises. And in addition to that, what can be caused is infection, organ damage, and even stroke. Wow. So the other thing that happens in people who have sickle cell disease is that these sickle cells, they don't live as long as normal cells do. Mm -hmm. So they live like 10 to 20 days as opposed to the usual 90 to 120 wow. days. Wow. Oh. So what does that do? That causes this constant shortfall of red blood cells, that's called anemia. And this can cause things like fatigue. Wow. wow. So how do you get sickle cell disease? Mm -hmm. So I mentioned that this is an inherited yeah. disease. So someone that has sickle cell disease has received two sickle cell genes, one from each parent, mm. okay? But I want to tell you something else that I think is really important, and that is if you receive one sickle cell gene from one parent, you have something called sickle cell trait. Mm -hmm. Now, people with sickle cell trait have normal cells, and they also have those crescent or sickle-shaped cells, but they don't usually have the symptoms that someone with sickle cell disease has. Mm -hmm. But because they have the gene, they can pass it on to their children. Okay, mm -hmm. so this becomes really important to know. Mm -hmm. If you carry the sickle cell gene and you're planning on having children, yeah. then you should know your health history and you and your partner should consider genetic testing yes. or genetic counseling. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So important, yeah. so important. Yeah. Sickle cell I disease is common in the African American community. Is that right? That's exactly right. In fact, in the US, most people who have sickle cell disease are of African descent. In all, it's estimated that one in about 365 African Americans are affected by this disease. Wow. wow. One in 365. Mm -hmm. Now, it's important to know, though, that it isn't just African Americans. Uh, sickle cell disease can affect other people, Hispanics, uh, people from Southern Europe, oh, wow. from the Middle East, and also um, Asian Indians, okay, they can also be affected. Now, how do you tri treat sickle cell disease? So despite the fact that we know how uh, this disease is inherited and we've got now newborn screening tests that are expanded, um, there's still not really good treatment options for patients who have sickle cell and disease. There's no cure. Wow. And there is no cure. So right now, treatment goals are focused on or are aimed at trying to prevent those painful crises that mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. to try and manage symptoms, and to prevent complications. Wow. And I want to mention something else that um, I think is really important, and that is, unfortunately, people who have sickle cell disease can experience, um, I'll call it health-related stigma. And this can happen for a number of reasons, for race, for health status, yeah. for socioeconomic status, and because they're dealing with acute and chronic pain that may require medicine to manage it. And I'm mentioning this because this stigma can actually pose a barrier to patients with sickle cell getting the appropriate care. Wow. wow. Now, is there a cure for sickle cell disease? So right now, the only known cure is um, a, a bone marrow transplant. Really? 
Now that's complicated and it has some serious risks that go along with it, yes. including death. Wow. So um, I sound like nothing but bad news. No, <laughs> no, you're teaching no, us that's some what good we can news. Do. Yes. But there is good news. Okay, so look I at that. Say that. So there are a number of um, research um, activities that are ongoing that have real promise and that we're excited and hopeful about. Okay. And those include things like gene therapy as well as advances in pain management. Okay. Okay, okay. okay. well, living with sickle cell disease can be a challenge, but what steps can you take to make sure that you live a healthy life? Yeah, so I'm glad that you asked that because sickle cell is a lifelong disease. Wow. So you're managing it kind of every day. Mm -hmm. So it's important for people who have the disease to work to manage it every day, to have a plan. Mm -hmm. um, it's also important that they become their own health advocates. So great. But it's also important to not try to do it alone. Mm -hmm. So to build a good social network to help support you as you manage this disease, because you don't have to do it alone. Yeah. So great. <laughs> and I'm really into planning, okay. so, so I think it's important to have both a prevention plan and a treatment plan. Mm -hmm. And the prevention plan can include things like um, a healthy diet, but it also includes things like um, not being exposed to extreme temperatures, oh. which can cause a sickle cell crisis, oh. um, to learn to manage stress and fatigue, mm. and also yeah, so that's uh, another one of those. So wow. it's really important also um, for them to have always their medical history and their doctor's contact information. Why? Because when emergencies happen, yes. they want to make sure that so they have smart. that. Wow. And then it's hard to keep up with these doctor's appointments because there can be a lot of them. Mm -hmm. But it's really important to keep up with the appointments mm -hmm. and to keep in touch with the healthcare team because there is research that's going on that's trying to bring new and more effective treatments to people who suffer with sickle cell disease. That's wow. so great. Dr. Frida, thank you so much thank for you. stopping by and having this conversation with us. So informative. We really appreciate it. Make sure that you all visit Dr. Frida's website, gethealthystayhealthy.com. It's a great resource. And for more information, head on over to thereal.com. We've got to take a quick break, but we'll be right back. This is The Real. That's true.